This is the Digital Music Trends coverage of MEDEM 2014, an interview with Denila Degayeri, President and CEO of Believe Digital. DMT's coverage is brought to you by CI, the delivery platform used by leading independent labels, distributors and aggregators around the world on ci-info.com. So hi, Denny, and uh, thanks for joining me. How's it going today? Uh, very well, thank you. Nice place you've got here. Uh, it's <laughs> fun to be here and good first day at Medium. <laughs> yeah, I know it's, it's been a long day at the Palais and uh, they, they've actually uh, uh, chucked us out now. So we, we, have to, we have to do the interview from the flat, uh, which is also a bit more comfortable, I think, and quieter. Okay. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I want to hear all about uh, Believe. Of course, you know, I, I was telling you in the prep that uh, I've been uh, uh, known about the company since uh, 2006, so when I came into contact with uh, uh, one of uh, the first people that was looking into the, the UK market in, in London and so the company has grown incredibly in the last uh, so seven years uh, and you now have offices all over the world uh, so first of all uh, let's talk a little bit about that process of uh, expanding a music company and making it uh, uh, so incredibly successful uh, even whilst there's so many people that are you know struggling in this industry so what's the key to to believe success so far have the secret recipe <laughs> <laughs> it's um well I, I think it's a first uh mix of making sure that when you uh talk to clients it's uh, our clients basically trust them and they trust them because we are prompt with them we provide them services yeah. uh we basically we do uh we do what we say um to them so it's, i think that's basically been been the basis and then oh. for companies like us i think it's either you're international or you're not um, I mean, we see, uh, we're looking at our stats in the UK a couple of days ago, uh, for all of our uh, UK labels, UK sales represent 25% of the revenues, 75% comes from Germany, the US, the rest of Europe. So if you don't have offices in those countries to be able to support an artist when something happens, then you're not doing your job properly. That's yeah. so why for us, international expansion was absolutely key. Uh, what we see is, I mean, Europe has historically always been our focus and remains our focus because for all of our clients, it's the number one market uh, for UK labels. They sell music uh, pretty much uh, in, the, in, the, in the vicinity, I would say, uh, Scandinavia, France, Germany, Italy, and then maybe Australia, the US. So uh, Europe remains a very strong focus. And then uh, we have opened about 20 new offices around the world last year. Um, essentially, as uh, Apple expanded into this market, this created a new opportunities for us. Uh, and what we've seen is some very strong, fantastic markets, uh, Russia, Turkey, um, especially some of for of our European uh, labels in terms of volumes. Uh, Russia, for example, has become our fifth largest territory worldwide. Wow. Very significant volumes. And we, that's incredible because it's a very challenging territory for most, uh, most rice holders, right? We, we now have like five people in Moscow uh, working for Believe Digital. When we spoke about opening an office there uh, a year and a half ago, everybody was telling us, you guys are crazy crazy uh, uh, champion of the world for piracy and I mean what we see is um, always the same story if you're able to provide good service uh, and which is a, a country where Apple is very strong where people buy iPhone 600 700 dollars when it comes to buying an album for 499 599 then then people are happy when the solution is here and we seem in mean, we've, we've done some with, with some top local Russian artists with um, Zemfira which is our top artist there Last album was released about a month ago. I was looking yesterday. We've sold 48,000 copies on iTunes digitally uh, in a month and a half. So it's 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 great. Uh, some of these ter very good surprises in some of these territories. And in Russia, of course, you know, talking about uh, iTunes, and is that like still like you know the by far the main driver of, of sales? Um, uh, Google Music is so, uh, which launched a little bit later, uh, has seen great success, uh, very strong uh, early numbers, um, and and we see it's still a market where uh, ring backbone providers uh, locally are are still very strong, uh, but the structure is clearly evolving like many of those markets. Yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, what, what we see. Interestingly, the conclusion we've come to is, and I've spent a lot of my time traveling around, is, is based, you almost have three market phases. Is one where dominated by wireless carriers for three, four years, and then usually Apple comes in, takes 50, 60, 70, 80 percent of the market, and lasts three, two, three, four years, and then the last phase of the market um, 
uh, Deezer, Spotify, RDO come in the market and then uh, start gaining some market share. So it, we really see this all around the world, So which means you need to have the understanding of local market to be able to basically do your job properly as a distributor. Sure. And uh, you know, we're looking at in the UK and in the US, uh, the 2013 has been reported of the first year where digital track sales or, uh, started declining. And uh, of course, the streaming is growing dramatically. So uh, does that shift uh, sort of your revenue model in a sense, uh, or is essentially just a substitution of the same? Tough question. <laughs> it's a very tough question. What what we see is um, the, the the way we we look at it is in two ways. One, it's uh, basically what's the size of the pie in yeah. the market, and then how is that pie being divided on download market on streaming market. Uh, the good news right now, what we're seeing is that when the pie is divided, it's actually more favorable. Uh, in streaming markets for our clients, because streaming tend you tend to have a higher level di um, of discovery, yeah. and typically um, in a market uh, like France, for example, where we have an average market share of about seven percent on streaming services, our market share is almost ten percent, wow. so uh, almost forty percent higher because people are discovering more music, it's easier, you don't have to buy a track. Uh, so it, it's actually favorable. Uh, what we are seeing uh, also on the other end though, in the switch, um, we think there's the question as to whether the switch to streaming in the short term, actually for the overall pie, um, creates value or um, destroys value. And I think the answer there is very different. Yeah. Uh, in a market where Obviously, the download market is not built. When streaming picks up early, uh, it, it creates additional value. In some markets like France, what we're seeing is um, once you start having a customer switch from download to streaming, you are actually destroying value in the short term. Um, so it's a mix, I, I would say, a little bit too early to tell, and it really depends a lot on, on the services, uh, uh, on, on the growth of the services of Deezer, Spotify in each territory. But I would say as a, as a whole, in the medium term, it clearly has an impact of flattening out the growth on the market. Uh, I mean, what we see clearly, we see the trend in the US uh, with uh, declining track downloads last year. We see the trend in the UK. We see the trend in France, which are uh, all um, top five uh, worldwide markets. So it's, I would say uh, it probably has a negative impact short term on growth um, yeah. and then varying by market. Yeah, sure. And uh, so looking at the independent sector, of course, one of the, the factors that played into uh, belief success is also the fact that the independent sector has been incredibly strong over the last uh, five, six years, uh, also perhaps aided by all these new discovery tools and, and the fact that you can find music all that easily. We've seen also that, the, you know, at the Grammys uh, last week, uh, uh, over 50% of the Grammys went to independent labels, which is, which is fantastic. So how do you see that trend continuing? And do you think that uh, independents are going to continue chipping away at the, at, at, at the major dominance? Uh, yes, I do think, uh, for, for two reasons. One is when you look at the creativity, uh, I mean, when you have uh, hundreds, thousands of indie labels in one country, in the UK, in France, that produce electronic music, world music, dubstep, uh, all genres of music, I mean, the major labels will never be able to have a creative output that as important as uh, as the independent community can provide. Uh, that, that's one. Two, I think uh, the discovery is being facilitated, as you said, by the digital space. So it's easier to discover music on streaming on YouTube. I and mean, YouTube became the first uh, vector of discovery of music in the US in the past, uh, in the past year. So it, you, we are less dependent on traditional radio networks to help push, which is great for the uh, which is great for the independent sector, and then uh, I think on top of it, you're starting to realize that a number of major label artists or former major label artists um, are getting their rights out of uh, major labels, looking for alternative models, and that they they start realizing like companies like Believe and and others have the capability of um, 
having uh, number one best-selling albums, number one best-selling artists. I mean, if I just take last week, uh, we're basically number one selling um, track in Russia with Martin Garrix. We were uh, top, ten, top uh, five albums in France last year with uh, last uh, month in France with Grand Corps Malade. We were tw top 20 billboard charts in the UK with James Vincent McMorrow. And, it, and I'm sure I'm forgetting uh, many of them. I mean, when when we achieved, it was looking, our market share in Germany last uh, week was over 5%, uh, and it's a mix of top artists uh, and uh, indie labels. So I think you're definitely seeing a trend that's very favorable towards more uh, indie artists, more, more indie labels. So I'm actually quite, quite a bit about, about that trend. Obviously. And uh, talking about you were talking about the expansion into into different markets, and uh, you mentioned Asia, Asia in the prep. So, well, there, what is the territory that is really exciting you, and you think has got the most potential? Um, the, uh, I mean, t uh, Australia has been uh, a good territory and uh, quite uh, with a very high level of, um, <coughs> excuse me, digital penetration. What we see is clearly. Territories like Indonesia, uh, the Philippines are quite interesting they, with very strong uh, local music production a market that's, that's growing, driven by YouTube, driven by iTunes. So um, quite a few markets. Well, looking at uh, the product front for Believe, so is there anything in particular that you feel uh, you, you are, you're working towards providing to your partners that, uh, that you know, is important to you and that you are actively pursuing? Um, uh, two directions is um, one, uh, better international coordination. Um, and for which we're building uh, technology tools and and um, and actually people, because what we see is more and more labels sell internationally. Yeah. Uh, when they sell internationally, they want to start establishing relationship with people locally. Italian label might want us to help uh, them find a great radio promoter uh, in Turkey or in Russia or some or in France, and and then our role becomes more and more outside of distribution. Is what services can we do to help them take the benefit of, of the uh, the international world? That that's one, and I would say the other um, video has been a very strong uh, of asset for us and very strong strength so we're still building and, and I would say to me the, the, our key priorities for the next 12 24 months is digital marketing and promotion I mean where, when we get to, when you get to the stage where you have millions of users on Spotify millions of users on Deezer then the question of what technologies do you build what digital marketing know-how do you build to better market promote your artist uh, becomes more important than, than ever so we're working on set of strategies that go from everything to improving SEO uh, on for our content on Deezer and Spotify to uh, being able to cross reference, cross promote products. So that's uh, absolutely the key, um, the key to our strategy. That's great. Well, uh, you know the, the company is uh, Believe Digital. Of course, you can go and check out their website and find out more about the company and get in touch with some of the regional offices. Of course, if you are interested in knowing more about the company. Thanks so much, Dean, for your time. Thank you very much. Really appreciate it. And thanks for listening to the DMT coverage of Medium 2014. You can find everything out on digitalmusictrends.com or youtube.com slash digitalmusictrends. <laughs>